So two days ago, I got a ride to the hardware store to get boat parts because the only way to get anywhere here is by boat. And I'm going to have to order stuff to make the boat I really want to make. But while I was there, I was like, I should just order some stuff to play with. So I ordered four sheets of quarter inch plywood, two gallons of polyester resin, ten yards of uh, fiberglass mat, like the chopped strand stuff. And I got all that home, and then I was like, all right, I want to make some kind of little boat out of this. And this is what I've come up with. This is a scale miniature model, of course. Or can I, can I see the little man? Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a scale miniature of me. Put him by the boat. So that's, that's how big I'll be compared to the, the boat I'm going to make. Now my first thought was to make these individual kayaks so you could remove them and paddle around on their own. But to make it a kayak, I'd have to make it wider and, you know, to make it more stable and then it would have more drag. So if I make them so they don't have to be stable on their own, uh, I can make them much more streamlined. So I'm going with the streamlined. Because I want overall fastest speed. So the basic idea behind the design of these pontoons is I wanted to make it really simple to make them. So it's two flat sheets connected at the bottom, you know, with a little angled chunk at each end and just fold it in half and then there's another piece cut out to fit in the top and that's it. Um, so I'm doing that and then we have to fiberglass over the whole thing and imagine this much bigger. Now down here I've got two pieces of plywood cut. Uh, this is a foot and a half wide and just the whole length of two sheets and there's a little like one of these end pieces glued there to connect those two. And this is eight inches in from here and you know, the full height there. And here's another thing that's exactly the same as this one. These are the two side pieces. And then over here, obviously I have the top, which I just kind of hand drew because I didn't have anything that would draw that huge of a circle. And it didn't come out perfect, but it's not bad. And I could have taken a huge long string with pencil at the end to make the round part, but the string would have had to be really long and there's not a lot of space where I am. There's like banana trees everywhere and there's just not that much space here. So I just hand drew it and I think it's fine. Oh, and I've also got on the top part little nibs so that when I put those side pieces on they can fit in that little slot between the nib and the thing be right in here. Oh, and here's my tools. That's it. And uh, there's my roll of fiberglass and my other two sheets of plywood. And some sandpaper. Spackle knife thingy. And here's my two gallons of polyester resin in rum bottles. Because that's how they sell it here. Everything costs 150 bucks. And some of the stuff is reusable. And I shouldn't need all that resin. Anyway, all right, now let me figure out how to connect these silly things. Oh, and yeah, a table saw would have made much nicer edges, but yeah, it's good enough. I've found some bungee cords. I think I can use these somehow. All right, first, let's inspect the connections. I think they came up pretty good. All right, my original pontoons on my little green model uh, were only a foot wide, but I wanted to make them a little bit wider to get some more buoyancy. So when I cut this out, you know, there ended up being chunks left over here and over here, and I used those to make this wider chunk here and just glued it all together. Hopefully that'll be fine. It's all going to be fiberglass together, so it should be all right. Also, I didn't actually calculate how wide I could make them, but it turns out when I just drew it by hand, I had a sixteenth of an inch to spare to be able to make this piece. So it worked out great. All right, when I put these two pieces together, I meant to make this seam alternate by having this seam over here, but 
when I made them, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. So this stupid seam goes right down there. It'd be stronger the other way, but mm, it's not big enough difference to go back. All right, I'm thinking I can take this, flip it upside down, lay a bunch of bungee cords under it, and then take no. these and no. kind of put them there and bungee cord it all together and like get an idea of how it's gonna go together and hopefully glue it together before, I don't know. Let me get that part. When I get this all attached, this is gonna bow this way in the uncalculated amount. So I'm just putting a couple pieces of wood under there. So they'll be able to flex. It looks pretty good. All right, I'll have this one overhang this way a little bit so there's more of a point on the end. And this one will overhang that way a little bit. And I was hoping that would make everything long enough to fit on the top. And it does. So that's great. And the reason it might not fit on the top is because these things have to curve around and it's 16 feet long along the curve and then this thing the top piece is straight 16 feet long so the the actual curve on that is longer I hope that made sense anyway these end up being slightly shorter than the, the other piece but offsetting the two side pieces a little bit makes up for enough it was only like few millimeters too long and then I get extra pointy fronts and backs which is good because I want to slice right through the water alright now how do I get this all to stay together uh, I have lots of string because water filters are made out of string here and people throw them out so I have slightly dirty string so I'm thinking just making lots of holes and sewing it together I also did find a roll of fiberglass tape. Maybe that'll be useful somewhere. All right, no drill, so. So this is a water filter, which is just a giant thing of string, at least this kind. People throw these out all the time, and I'm always like, why would you do such a thing? It's a huge thing of string. All right, and I've got a wire, so I can make a, Sewing needle, good enough to do this anyway. I think that's good, so make sure it fits through. Excellent. I have to do this like 150 times. Ah, do I want to risk leaving little bumps all over the place? Or cut a little groove into the wood? I think I'll cut a bit of a groove because I'm going to have a real thin thing of fiberglass. It's not going to cover up a bump like that. Or I could go find some skinnier string. Yeah. Right, I should still leave enough strength to hold it together. Haha, -ha, looks good. Okay, 
No, lots more. Well, no, that's not doing anything.